Hello, lovely students, and welcome back to English with Lucy. Today, I've got a really interesting lesson for you. We're going to talk about words that sound the same but have different meanings, and there are two categories here. We have homonyms and homographs. Homonyms are words that are spelt and pronounced the same, but they have different meanings, like bark, for example, and also. Fly. Homographs are words that are spelt the same, but they are pronounced in a different way, and of course they have different meanings. For example, desert and dessert. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you that, as always, there is a free PDF that goes with today's lesson. It's got everything that we discuss in the lesson. Plus, it's got some activities and some exercise questions, so you can put what you've learnt into practice. If you'd like to download that free PDF, just click on the link in the description box. You enter your name and your email address. You sign up to my mailing list, and the PDF will come directly to your inbox. After that, you will automatically receive my free weekly lesson PDFs, along with all of my news, course offers, and updates. It's a free service, and you can unsubscribe at any time. I would also like to mention that I'm running a special promotion on my ultimate vocabulary course. In this course, you will learn over 650 new vocabulary words and phrases, including idioms, collocations, and phrasal verbs. You can take a lesson a day for 90 days, or take them at your own pace. If you'd like to claim that, click on the link in the description box. It's right there for you. All of the information is there. Right, let's get started with the lesson. Okay, so I mentioned we're going to be talking about homonyms and homographs. Let's start by looking at homonyms. I'll talk about ten really common ones. Remember, they are spelt and pronounced in the same way. They just have different meanings. Same words, different meanings. Firstly, we have bark. Bark. Bark means the hard covering of a tree. You know, it's that layer you can normally peel off. For example, the oak tree has brown bark. The second meaning of bark is the noise that a dog makes. You know that loud noise. Do you want me to do it for you? Rawr. <laughs> that sounded a bit more like a cat.、Uh, you know what I mean.、Um, a dog's bark. It can also be the verb to bark. The dog. Barked at the cat. The dog's bark was loud. It can also be used to talk about humans if they say something abruptly or aggressively. Stop barking at me! God, you're talking so aggressively. It can be quite insulting to insinuate that someone is barking at you like a dog. On to the next one. We have number two, which is fine. Fine. You probably know the most common meaning of this word, which is to say you're okay. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. But did you know that fine also means the amount of money that you have to pay when you break the law? A fine. I got a fifty-pound fine for speeding. So we have fine as in good or okay, and fine as in money you pay when you break the law. Number three is bat. Bat. A bat is both an animal and something that we use in sport. As an animal, a bat. Is a little mammal, a little bit like an, a mouse, but with leathery wings that flies at night. They're usually associated with Halloween. I'm scared of bats. Apparently, they suck blood. In sport, a bat is usually a wooden object that we use to hit a ball in certain games like cricket and baseball. An example: We can't start playing until we find the bat. You know from context that we're talking about the wooden bat, not the animal bat. Next, we have number four, which is kind. Kind. As an adjective, kind means nice and helpful and caring. She is a kind person. As a noun, kind means type. A kind of thing. A type of thing. What kind of fuel should I use in this car? What type of fuel should I use in this car? Number five is spring. Spring. Our first meaning is the season that comes between winter and summer. The season when there are lambs everywhere, the flowers come up, the leaves appear on the trees. It's my favourite season. An example in the UK: spring is from March until May. Another meaning of spring 
is a place where water naturally comes up from the ground. I love drinking natural spring water. My dog loves playing in the local spring. We have a third meaning as well. A spring can be a metal coil, like the ones that you find in a mattress or in a trampoline. An example, don't jump on the bed, you'll damage the springs in the mattress. Number six is match, match. A match can be a game that's played in sports like a cricket match, a football match, a hockey match. An example, are you going to watch the match on TV later? A match can also be a little wooden stick with a chemical at one end that we use to burn things. So we use a match to light a candle. An example, I need some matches to light these candles. Next up, we have fly, fly. When a bird, a plane or an insect moves through the sky, we say that it flies. To fly can also mean to travel by plane. I'm flying to Abu Dhabi next week. A fly can also mean an insect with wings. An example, there are lots of flies on the meat. So we have fly as a verb and fly as a noun. Our next one, number eight, is one that often confuses my students. It is mean, mean. When something means something, it expresses something. What does this word mean in English? However, it can also be used as an adjective. It has a negative meaning. If someone is mean, it means they are cruel or unkind. An example, he told me I didn't look nice today. It was very mean. It was cruel and unkind of him. Stop being so mean, stop being so unkind. We have number nine, which is stalk. Stalk, I know that or sound can be quite hard for some students stalk. We don't pronounce the L there. One meaning is the stem, the long part of a flower, the long green part, part that separates the roots from the head. I need to cut the stalks of these roses before I put them in a vase. We can also use stalk as a verb. If you stalk someone, it means you follow them illegally without being seen. The man was stalking her for a month before the police caught him. Finally, our last homonym before we move on to the homographs is train, train. A train is a railway vehicle with carriages. I love traveling by train. Train as a verb can mean to practice for something, to prepare yourself for something by learning and working hard. I'm training for a marathon at the moment. Okay, that's it for the homonyms. Now let's move on to the homographs. These are words that are spelt in the same way, but they are pronounced differently. And of course they have different meanings. I find these particularly interesting. The pronunciation differences can be quite subtle. So I'll say them as clearly as possible so you can try to hear those differences. I'll also put the phonetic transcriptions up on the screen for you to see the differences too. Firstly, we are looking at desert and dessert. Desert and dessert. Look at where I'm putting the focus on that word. Desert, the stress. The meaning of a desert is a large area where not much grows. We typically think of it as a sandy area, although it can be snowy. It's just a place where there isn't much life. I'd love to visit the Sahara Desert one day. To desert can also be used as a verb. The syllable stress changes. Desert as a noun, desert as a verb. To desert means to leave someone often in a difficult situation. She deserted her husband. She left him in a difficult situation. Next we have tear and tear. Tear and tear. I know both of these vowel sounds are really hard for some of you. Air, ear, air, ear. To tear means to pull something apart so that it separates into pieces. Don't tear that piece of paper, it's important. A tear, on the other hand, is a drop of water or liquid that comes from your eye when you cry. Tear. He had tears in his eye when he spoke about his cat. For number three, we have bow and bow. Bow and bow. Ow, ow. Oh. To bow means to bend forward from the hips to show respect to someone. It's common to bow to people in Japan. A bow is a weapon made of curved wood and you shoot arrows with it. A bow is also a ribbon that you wear in your hair or on your neck, a bow tie. An example, people used to fight with bow and arrows or I wore a bow in my hair to the wedding. Next, we have number four, row and row. 
row and row. A row is an argument. It often involves shouting. I had a row with my husband about the washing up. So we bought a dishwasher. <laughs> a row, O, is a line of things next to each other. I sat in the front row so I could see the screen better. Next, we have two words that do sound very similar. Let's see if you can hear the difference. Overlook and overlook. Overlook, overlook. The syllable stress changes. If you overlook something, it means that you miss an important detail. You overlooked a very important factor, the price. Another meaning is a place that gives a good view of something from above, an overlook. We stopped at an overlook for a great view of the Grand Canyon. For number six, we have wind and wind. Wind and wind. Wind is the type of weather that blows at you when air blows at you and you can feel it. The wind was really strong today. The second word, the verb to wind, is a verb meaning to turn something. I have an old fashioned watch that I need to wind every morning. I need to turn the knob on it. I need to wind it up. Continuing on from wind, we have number seven, wound and wound. Wound and wound. Ow, oo. Ow, oo, wound, wound. Wound is the past tense of the verb wind. I wound the wool up into a ball. Wound is an injury or to injure. It's usually an injury that you get from violence or from war. He wounded his leg in the war. He had a terrible wound on his leg. Next we have record and record. Record, record. This is part of a noun verb pair. As a verb, to record means to make an electronic copy of images or sounds. My favorite band just recorded a new song. As a noun, the stress changes. A record changes to the first syllable. It means information that is kept about something or a piece of music that has been recorded. We made a record of all the day's events. For number nine, we have Entrance and entrance. Entrance and entrance. The first meaning, entrance, is the place where you enter somewhere, like a gate or a door. The entrance is around the side. To entrance, if something entrances you, it means it's so beautiful or interesting that you give it all of your attention. Her singing completely entranced me. Finally, the last pair, we have present and present present and present. It's that changed syllable stress again. The noun present means a gift, something that you give to someone. Thank you for my birthday present. The verb to present means to give something in a formal way. It could be an item like an award, it could be a speech. They presented him with a certificate. Right, that is it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to download the free PDF that goes with this video. It's got everything you've learned today with all the transcriptions and examples, plus some extra exercises so you can put what you've learned into practice. Also remember that we are running our special promotion on the ultimate vocabulary course. You will learn over 600 idioms, collocations and phrasal verbs. It really is the most fantastic course. The feedback has been absolutely amazing. If you want to get that special price, just click on the link in the description box. Don't forget to connect with me on all of my social media. I've got my Instagram at English with Lucy and my personal Instagram at Lucy. I've got my website englishwithlucy.co.uk where I've got a fantastic interactive pronunciation tool. You can click on the phonemes and hear me pronounce the phonemes and words that contain those phonemes. I've also got my vlogging channel where you can follow our lives here in the English countryside and all of the vlogs are fully subtitled so that you can use them for vocabulary and listening practice. I will see you soon for another lesson. Mwah. Number three is, yes, that's number three. Well done, Lucy. <laughs> wow. In certain games like cricket and baseball, cricket and baseball, wow. unless you were participating in bat racing or something. <laughs> God, I'm funny today, aren't I? My God, what a joke. I am going to be done. Fly. We can use it as a bird, as a bird. We can also use stalk as a vowel. a vowel. Hello, is that my doggy? Finally, the last per. Ah, ah. Right, sorry.
sorry, I'm funny. Plus some extra, extra active. Ha, okay, I'm gonna go listen to some jazz. I'm really excited. Did I need to do anything? No, I think that's it. Bye. <laughs>